Hello there, very good evening and welcome to our Prime Time News Bulletin. I'm Shail Silva. And I'm Nicola Di Zerza. We start off with a look at tonight's headlines. President pleased over the establishment of the rule of law. Justice Danat Di Silva steps down from the bench considering the appeal of Gotabe Rajpaksa. Local government politicians call for support for the 20th Amendment to bring Mahindra Rajpaksa back to power. UNP responds to the President's controversial statement. Addressing an event today, President Maitripala Sirisena recalled an experience of the first 72 hours of his presidency. The President was speaking at the occasion to declare open the new court complex in Vattala. The court complex was constructed at a cost of 275 million rupees. Speaking at the event, the president said a special unit will be established for judges to present their grievances and issues concerning promotions and transfers. President Sirisena said a proposal will be made for the appointment of a three-member committee comprising of Supreme Court, Court of Appeal and High Court judges for this purpose. <laughs> ensuring the rule of law in the country, strengthening the people's democracy and freedom, and building a society free of fraud and corruption. I can be happy about two of these things. Within these three and a half years, I can clearly see the country's rule of law being assured and the strengthening of democracy and freedom. 24 hours after I was elected president, my experience with the country's rule of law and legal sector were disappointing. Just 24 hours after being made president, the highest official in the judicial sector met me and made a proposal. He came to meet me on three days. I did not respond to his proposal on the first and second days since it was just the 24 hours and 48 hours of my presidency. 72 hours later though, I gave my response based on the factors the then Chief Justice presented to me and the advice given to me by the legal sector that the removal of Chief Justice Shirani Bandaranaika was not legal. I had to take the decision of removing this Chief Justice. Anyone holding any post should be given the space and freedom to fulfill their responsibilities and duties in freedom and with good humanity. This applies to the small state sector employee as well. MP Vasudevananakara responded to the speech made by the president yesterday. The internal issues of this government have come to a critical point. That speech not only aggravated the crisis, but it also declared the severity of this government. This was an indication that this government cannot go any longer. According to what he says, he was the one who stopped many bad things from happening to this country, like the state resources being lost and so on. If he had interfered to save those resources in a form of objection to Ranil Vikramasinghe, I wouldn't be surprised because from day one, Ranil Vikramasinghe wanted to transfer the ownership of all our banks to foreigners. Several factions have raised concerns stating the list of 118 people alleged to have been benefited by those involved in the central bank treasury bond scam need to be revealed. Investigations carried out by the Criminal Investigations Department over the bond scam revealed former Minister Dayasiri Jasikra had been given money by one of the companies in the perpetual group. While the investigations are ongoing, the CID searched the Perpetual Treasuries Limited premises located in the Parkland building in Colombo 2 after detectives obtained a search warrant from the Fort Magistrates Court last morning, supported by an application made by the Attorney General in this regard. Civil organizations state, as investigations continue, more names of those involved will be exposed. When the allegation was made that Dasri Jasekara had received money from a company in the Perpetual Group, Jasekara said, 118 others had benefited as well. Some activists say these details were included in the report of the Presidential Commission of Inquiry into the bond issue. However, they state the details have not been made public. We called on the Secretary to the President yesterday and handed over a letter requesting for the 118 names. He said the documents are with the National Archives and to obtain it from there. 
Elsa Lekana Garang make a Labagan. And according to the National Archives at what the archives officials are saying is that uh, it will take 30 long years to get uh, a copy out of this uh, from this uh, dark building. Continuously, the President and uh, the Presidential Secretary at uh, Austin Fernando has mentioned that they are open and they don't uh, want to hide any part of the report. Uh, it's the ultimate duty of the Presidential Secretary that uh, to get a copy of the bond issue. <laughs> Jayasekhar will not be included in that list. The 118 people have been given money by perpetual treasuries, which was moved through W.M. Mendes. The money was given for him to step away from the bond scam. At that time, one million was peanuts. However, at the time, large condominiums, houses, lands and luxury SUVs have been given. I think they are involving Jayasekhar in the list of 118 solely because of their hypocritical ways. One cannot say a sum of 100,000 was taken from the bond scam. There are people who contribute to elections annually. When people come forward and provide money, it goes to a petty cash account. From there, it will be used for political acts. I have nothing to hide. I can return the 100,000 rupees. There is no issue in that. At the 2005 presidential election, I gave 600,000 rupees to Mahindra Rajapaksa when Gota Bay visited me and weeped they did not have the funds. Sarat Fonseca has lost his status. Just look at the amount he has taken. There are others who are now afraid because their names will be exposed. They are trying to slip away before they are exposed. If one took money, he cannot get away. This government is full of rogues. During election time, people like Carlo Fonseca, my uncle, gave us money. Carlo Fonseca was not the one who looted the central bank. If people with shady names give us money, we will not accept them. We know it will come back to us like a boomerang. They spoke to me and I have that conversation recorded. Arjun Loises had wanted to meet with me and the message was sent via a presenter at ITN. I said there was no need for that. I had the backbone to say so. Ministers are going around saying I was given 100,000 rupees or 200,000 rupees. They say I distribute it among those with me. I guess it would have been better if they said this before. I have never taken any money. I do not wish to comment about the others. I did not take money from anyone. The list of 180 names must be exposed. It should not be concealed. I have no need to ask things from such questionable people. Court of Appeal Judge Justice Janat De Silva declared in open court today that he would be removing himself from hearing the Court of Appeal application filed by former Defence Secretary Gotabe Rajapaksa. The Commission to Investigate Allegations of Bribery or Corruption had filed action in the Kalamo Chief Magistrate's Court against the former Defence Secretary on the charge that the former Defence Secretary had caused the country a loss of 11.4 billion rupees by giving approval for avant-garde maritime services to operate a floating armory. Gota Rajapaksa had subsequently filed a petition in the Court of Appeal requesting the Court to declare him not guilty from the charges filed by the Commission and to remove him from the case. The Court of Appeal petition was called before Court of Appeal Justices Kumudini Vikramasinghe and Janat De Silva. The matter was postponed for tomorrow by Justice Kumudini Vikramasinghe after Justice Janat De Silva declared that he be removed from hearing the matter, citing personal grounds. The 16 Sri Lanka Freedom Party members who voted in favour of the no-confidence motion convened a media briefing today. The reorganization of the SLFP has begun. I think once that is done, as we have already presented to the Central Committee, we will move to leave the government. We will take that discussion up again. Our plan is to remove our party and alliance from the government. The UNP has clearly stated that the Prime Minister will be presented as the presidential candidate in 2020. We don't know what will happen. The President has indicated that he will contest again. That's why he said he will not retire in 2020. 
No, that is wrong. The president has never said that he will contest at the election. The president only said that he will not quit politics. If that happens, what will be your stance in 2020? How many people have not given up politics? No. Don't rush. The president has one and a half years left. We congratulate the UNP on choosing Ranul Vikramasinghe as their candidate because that has strengthened our side even more. There are plenty of people suited to be the presidential candidate. For now, Gotabe Rajapaksa is mentioned. Basil Rajapaksa's name is also mentioned. Our party leader, Maitri Palasirisena's name is also mentioned. Even Vasudeva's name can come up tomorrow. Dinesh Govardhana's name can be thrown in. We will sit together and make a decision about it. That won't be a big problem, I think. There are 20 volt bulbs, 40 volt bulbs, 60 volt bulbs and 100 volt bulbs. If we think 20 volts for 100 volt brightness, there will be a short circuit of the bulb. The United National Party today responded to the statement made by President Maitri Pala Sirisena yesterday at the commemoration held for the late most venerable Madhulu Abe Sobitatero. Several UNP ministers were questioned by journalists on the president's statement when they attended an event in Colombo today. I am here for a Samurdi event. Who am I to respond to what the president said? The president said something important. The president said those who killed Basim Tajuddin and others who have been cornered and he said who is not allowing them to proceed. The president must reveal those names. You can question that through the Right to Information Act. You can ask from the Air Force as to who provided the helicopter. According to the president, someone had used his name to release the two helicopters. That is a serious offence. I stand with his stance. The bottom tier people involved have been arrested. When orders come from above, the young soldiers in fact believe those orders are legitimate. We need to ensure orders are not given to commit such crimes. That is our responsibility. The UNP Working Committee convened at the party headquarters Sirikota under the auspices of Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe. Following the meeting, questions were posed to the ministers and MPs over the president's statement. That is the president's view. We cannot criticize it. There is no reason for us to comment on that. We do not wish to create issues in the government by criticizing the statement. The 100-day program was created by bringing together all political forces that want to establish democracy. If one is saying they were not involved in it, you must pose a question to that person. It is difficult to comment. A proposal was in the 100-day program was presented by one, and the other was brought by another. It was prepared based on the views of many. Views were also expressed about the matters discussed at the working committee meeting. The national organizer has been instructed to produce a grassroots level restructuring plan by the end of next week. We discussed the removal of electorate organizers and appointing youth to those positions. There was approval for the proposal put forward to construct a kerosene station at all piers located across the country. Yesterday, the joint opposition had decided to oppose the 20th Amendment to the Constitution. We decided to oppose the JVP's proposal to abolish the executive presidency. It was the opinion of many the JVP is moving this proposal with an ulterior motive. Therefore, we decided to oppose the move. At a time when we are preparing to establish power in the future with Mahindra Rajapaksa at the Prime Minister, we are ready to bring forward a proposal to change the constitution. However, the local government representatives supporting the joint opposition had something different to say. The government thought the introduction of the 19th Amendment to the Constitution took away the opportunity for a president to contest for a third time. 
I wish to tell this to all the MPs. The only leader who united the country is Mahindra Rajapaksa. Just as these MPs raised their hands without a question for the 19th Amendment, they can allow for the 20th Amendment to be brought forward so that once again Mahindra Rajapaksa can contest the presidential election. We urge the MPs to do so or they are afraid of Mahindra. Two weeks ago, the former president has said the executive presidency should be abolished. When he is going to sleep, he says one thing. When he wakes up, he says another. That cannot happen. A U.S. Congress delegation from House Armed Services Committee met with President Maitri Pala Sirisena at the president's official residence yesterday. The delegation comprised of Chairman of the House Armed Services Committee, Mac Thornberry, Henry Kuella, Vicky Hartzler and Carol Shia-Porter. During this meeting, the President said that Sri Lanka is a country which will work in a cooperative and friendly manner with the international community and recall the assistance given by the U.S. in training Sri Lankan forces. Military training programs are being conducted between the U.S. and Sri Lanka routinely, the President said pointing out the necessity of using more technological knowledge to further promote these programs and emphasize that there is no defense without technology in the modern world. The delegation also called on Prime Minister Ronil Vikramasinghe at Temple Trees. Fitch Rating in a special report said that Sri Lanka's large state banks are short of fresh capital to meet a full implementation of Basel III requirements by 2019. Assessing the current status of capital requirements for Basel III compliance, Fitch Rating observed that larger Sri Lankan banks are short of 19 billion rupees, with state banks accounting for 72% of it. Basel III is an internationally agreed set of measures developed by the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision in response to the financial crisis of 2007-2009. The measures aim to strengthen the regulation, supervision and risk management of banks. Banks in Sri Lanka are transitioning from Basel II to Basel III requirement, which calls for higher capital ratios. Fitch Rating has also observed that the state bank's ability to raise capitals is in certain instances are also constrained by limitations placed on them through the respective acts that govern their establishment. In this backdrop, banking experts say the government will have to infuse funds to the two state banks to boost their capital level. In early June last year, Cabinet approved a proposal to infuse 5 billion rupees to state-owned People's Bank in order to comply with new capital adequacy requirements. Uh, Central Bank of Sri Lanka uh, introduced uh, Basel III to Sri Lanka uh, in June 2017 and as a result all commercial banks in Sri Lanka irrespective of whether they are private banks, state banks or foreign banks will have to comply with the Basel III requirements. In the case of Basel III, what is uh, important is in addition to the normal capital that the banks will have to maintain, they have to maintain an additional capital which is known as the buffer capital and as a result the total capital requirements is much more than the normal capital requirements of a bank. Now this has very badly affected the two state banks because uh, unless the state is prepared to provide funds uh, to recapitalize the two state banks, the capital uh, level of the two state banks can get depleted. Once they get depleted, the implication is that uh, their correspondence banks will uh, give a lower credit rate to two state banks and as a result they would find it difficult to raise loans as well as uh, uh, issue letters of credit which uh, the corresponding banks would insist should be certified by a third party. So, because of this reason, it is absolutely necessary uh, for bank, uh, the two state banks in Sri Lanka to recapitalize themselves. But the only path available right now uh, is to uh, get the money from the taxpayers. Uh, if, the, uh, if for some any reason, if the government decides to raise money from the members of the public, it is necessary to amend the present legislation related to these two banks and uh, allow the government to issue shares to the members of the public. Since uh, there is no any plan for that, uh, I think uh, it is the state will have to provide the capital to the two state banks. Tea exporters say the decision taken by the United States to unilaterally abandon the nuclear deal with Iran is likely to put a dampener on Sri Lankan tea exports. Sri Lanka's total tea production for the first quarter of 2018 stood at 74.23 million kilograms in comparison to 66.88 million kilograms for the same period last year. 
During the quarter, Sri Lanka exported 5.56 million kilograms against 6.09 million kilograms in the same period last year. The embargo applies only to, in our case, only to the exchange of currency, specifically the US dollars via banks that are uh, under scrutiny in Iran. Unfortunately, almost all the banks in Iran are under scrutiny. So therefore, we are going to have a big problem in transacting business on uh, US dollars. The Sri Lankan tea exports to Iran fell 19% to 27.4 million kilograms for the full year of 2017 from the year before. During the first quarter of 2018, Iraq emerged as the number one market for Sri Lankan tea with exports of 6.61 million kilograms, up from 7.47 million kilograms same quarter last year, followed by Turkey with 9 million kilograms, up by 7.18 million kilograms. The trade dump embargoes now imposed strictly by the US did not happen overnight. But unfortunately, the highest in our land, the decision-making bodies, took it quite comfortably that things may not go to that level. It is typical of Sri Lankan decision-making authorities to wait until a debacle to happen to find solutions. The General Secretary of the Tamil United Liberation Front, V. Ananda Sangari, in a letter addressed to the President says the country has lost its much-needed peace and tranquility. Ananda Sangari states the government is duty bound to explore the possibilities of finding a solution acceptable to all ethnic groups, adding that several opportunities that had knocked on our doors were ignored. Citing the best opportunity came in 2004, Ananda Sangari states the failure to find a solution in 2004 cost the country several thousands of innocent lives of civilians, several thousands of combatants from both sides and the destruction of several billions worth of property, both private and government. He notes several requests were made to campaign for the Indian model as a solution to the ethnic problem. Up next is Voice of the People. This is the Haldamulla Ginigatkala main road. This is only available for the people living in Kirimatia, Ginigatkala, Nadangoda and Kalupahana to reach Badulla Kalambo main road. It's been over a month since this section of the road experienced a landslide and since then transportation along this road has come to a standstill. ගාණක් <laughs> Several areas across the country continue to face the threat of wild elephants encroaching on villages. The people living in the Otupalama village in Nilabama are among those who constantly face this issue. A herd of wild elephants has been terrorizing the area for several months and have even caused damages to their cultivations. The villagers say they made numerous complaints to the Karwalagaswa Wildlife Office over the matter. However, no action has been taken. All powers and responsibilities of the Sri Lanka of Sri Lanka cricket has been vested in the secretary to the Ministry of Sports until the elections of Sri Lanka cricket take place. Minister of Sports Faisal Mustafa said that Kamal Padmasiri, the secretary to the Ministry of Sports, has been appointed as the competent authority for SLC. Convening a media briefing earlier in the day, President of Sri Lanka Cricket, Thilanga Sumatipala, made clarifications on the injunction order issued, preventing SLC elections which were scheduled to be held today. Court has not prevented us from doing anything. The injunction order issued by court has two sections. The order has stopped the selection of office bearers. The general meeting has not been cancelled either. Secondly, we were going to bring in amendments to the constitution under the sports law. That too has been prevented. That is all. There is no prohibition whatsoever for us to work ahead. 
If the minister makes an appointment, it is in line with the sports law. The minister has the powers and whatever decision he takes is legal. Sumati Pala also commented on a report carried by News First. When Al Jazeera aired a documentary about the golf stadium, I was involved there as well. Then again, on Sports News, on News First, they linked Premier Series murder with Al Jazeera's documentary over some player not being included into the team. Premier Series was my friend. I am saddened about his murder. We have played cricket together for many years. I am quite close to his family. They themselves came and told that this was a personal issue and they know exactly who was behind this. Some have even been arrested and investigations are underway. We have to be mindful and help out their children. So such a powerful media institution on its news, when a case is filed with regard to the election, they link the Al Jazeera report and speculate if Premier City was murdered because of pitch fixing. We have had to face such low class acts. I respect the Sirusa Media Institution. Not everyone there is like that. But I have to say this is a very low class act. What is the connection between that death and myself? <laughs> Over the past few days, News First made extensive revelations on a documentary aired by Al Jazeera on the involvement of Sri Lankan cricketers and officials in match fixing. News First carried reports of the alleged pitch fixing at the Gaul International Cricket Stadium with sources and documents in hand. However, it appears that Sri Lanka cricket was also well aware of the events leading up to the pitchers being doctored to favour a particular party. Secretary of the Gaul Cricket Club informed the CEO of Sri Lanka Cricket in writing the fact that a team was brought from Colombo to prepare the pitch for the second test between Sri Lanka and Australia, despite their already being well-experienced team for this purpose, draws a cloud of suspicion. Halambage Premasiri, who sounded the alarms to Sri Lanka Cricket of match fixing, was shot and killed by an unidentified gunman. What was the cause for Sri Lanka cricket to assign a special team from Colombo for the second test between Sri Lanka and Australia in Gaul? According to Al Jazeera's documentary, Taranga Indika, who was a part of the team assigned from Colombo, was involved in match fixing. At the time, Taranga Indika was assigned as the stadium's assistant manager with the consent of Sri Lanka cricket. News first published details in this regard with hard evidence. Honorable President of Sri Lanka cricket, we respect you. According to what you say, if Halambage Premasiri, who was shot and killed, was a close friend of yours, played cricket together and is a close family friend, why wasn't any action taken two years ago when he issued warnings in writing to Sri Lanka cricket of a possibility of match fixing? If the letter we possess was exposed back then, not only would the match fixing be averted, but Al Jazeera would not have been able to report such detrimental details. According to the latest information we have received, the pitch at the Gaul International Cricket Stadium is being relayed since yesterday. To clear any uncertainty, here is visual evidence. Is this an attempt to cover up any evidence hidden beneath the Gaul pitch? Whilst we respect you, we must point out that it is you who has chosen to wear the cap. We have never chosen the cap for you. In a sense, you must take responsibility for your own actions. As we possess information on more incidents, do not give us a reason to report them. Minister of Sports, President's Council Pfizer Mustafa, isn't an immediate investigation into this matter needed. Just like Perpetual Treasuries Limited was sealed until investigations into the bond scam conclude, shouldn't the Gaul International Cricket Stadium also be sealed? Shouldn't the International Cricket Council conduct a special investigation into such incidents which brings disrepute to the country? And that's a wrap of tonight's bulletin. We'll leave you with a look at today's illustrated news by Asanta Lado Hetti. For the News First team, I'm Nicola Dezoiza. And I'm Shane Silva. Take care. Good night.